So we're jumping back in a little bit earlier than I expected. We haven't had really any um, time between episodes at all here, but we did have a Merc ship stop by that I wanted to take a look at with you guys. There's quite a few uh, people on offer here, pawns, whatever, uh, that we could look at maybe bringing in. And while we don't have a lot of silver, we do have a couple of things that we could sell to them that would at least help kind of make sure we break even on this. Giordana, for example, quite valuable according to the game here, almost 1500 silver. Um, even though for us, really all she's doing is being a, a prisoner who mines. So, you know, we had initially planned to make her into a tech priest, but she um, has had a lot of mental breaks to the point where we had to just kind of lock her up and mono focus her on one task and that's not super valuable so we could maybe swap her for uh at least one of these pawns here so i don't i want to spend time going through like every single one but uh i will give you guys some highlights so arena is a little bit interesting because she does have 12 plant skill if you recall from the last couple of episodes We've been trying to get somebody up to level 12 in plants so that we can start planting, uh, is it Neutroa leaf? Whatever the, the plant version of Neutromine is for industrial medicine, we need 12 planting skill to, to use that. So she would immediately come in and be able to contribute on that front. Um, the fact that she does have like some potential for construction is nice as well. Uh, same is true for artistic. Obviously not super advanced in combat, but we have plenty of marines to carry the workload there. I don't need my tech priests really contributing too much in that area. Uh, she is incapable of dumb labor, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we can keep her pretty busy with planting, so it's not a huge concern. Construction also, again, somewhere where she can contribute. And the fact that she is an undergrounder is kind of nice because... She's probably never going to be leaving our base. And so she um, will not be particularly bothered by that, which is, I think, kind of the opposite of the issue that we had with Jordana. So she's a, a prime candidate. Amory is how I'm going to choose to pronounce that, is a little bit interesting as well. He's a trans, a heat tolerant, heat tolerant transhumanist who is asexual. Um, he is almost 1,800 years old. I'm not sure how he managed that. You're not like an Eldar, are you? Oh, he is. Okay, never mind. Uh, obviously, we can't bring an Eldar in. I did kind of find his skill set a little bit interesting because he has some shooting and some crafting and a little bit of plants. Um, also, of course, the transhumanist thing, making him into like a tech priest would be um, a lot easier. But uh, if he's an Eldar, never mind. So Daisuke here is pretty interesting. He is... Good at melee and construction. He's not good at shooting, but he does have a lot of passion for it, so it wouldn't take a lot of effort at all to get him to a reasonable skill level. Obviously, the cooking is not going to be valuable, but, uh, you know, whatever. He's trigger happy, so aiming time is reduced. Of course, accuracy is, is as well, but if we were to turn him into a space marine, um, a lot of his equipment will have accuracy bonuses to kind of help offset that additionally uh if we get his shooting skill up to like 20 then it's not really going to matter at least not significantly so he's somebody that i think could be uh, a good marine candidate he's also only 24 years old i kind of like alessia's skill set as well she has a lot of passion for mining plants and social She's not particularly good at anything except for intellectual, but she is young at 23. And again, with those passions could become quite good at things that we do value. Uh, so, you know, for example, she could replace Giordana's mining and get up to her level pretty quickly and also be able to contribute um, some planting as well, which Giordana can't. She's composed, so less likely to have mental breaks. Obviously, Undergrounder is a pretty valuable one on kind of the same in the same context because they're less likely to have mental breaks from staying in the base this will also contribute just not in exactly the same way 
Um, eccentric is kind of a wash here because nobody's doing research. Um, and then neurotic is good and bad, so we do get that work speed bonus, but at the cost of a slightly more likely mental break. More likely to mental break. Um, so the compose kind of balances that out. She is still at, I guess, plus 3%, but that's not super significant. So kind of an interesting one there. I think at the going rate for a lot of these pawns, she might be just kind of too pricey for what she can contribute. I mean, it, it's nice, but it's auxiliary stuff. It's not critical, so maybe not her, but keep her on the, the short list anyway. So those, I think, are the three that I like the best. We only have really one pawn that we can swap here. So at best, we're looking at about 2,000 silver, which means we could only afford one of them. I might... Let's uh, back out quickly. Is there anybody here that we're kind of meh about? I would say that Wildfire, maybe. I mean, he, he's obviously very good at combat, but he's older than I want for a Space Marine candidate and also older than I think I said I would take. So if I'm holding myself to the rules I set at the beginning of this, then he would not be a Marine candidate. Um, obviously still could contribute in other ways. He could still be a, a tech priest with that medical skill, obviously intellectual, um, besides just research, can also contribute to other things, like it mentions in that tooltip, drug synthesis is also something he could do. And then, you know, social has a lot of value. So it's not like he's completely useless, even if we don't turn him into a Marine. I just don't know that we're getting the full benefit. We have Alistair here, who is passionate about just about everything, doesn't really have a specialty. Uh, another character who is too old to be a Space Marine, if I'm holding myself to the rules we set at the beginning. But obviously, that would be a waste of his skills anyways, because he can do a lot of things. The question is, does he do anything well enough that we you know, would really want to keep him around, or is he just kind of a, a utility man who's nice to have but isn't critical because maybe we could swap him for somebody who is. And then Pishy here was, I believe, a Marine candidate. Um... Shooting in melee is there. Obviously, we'd like a little bit more passion. Doesn't really do much else. Let's see. Fortune Finder. Um, that does kind of make him an interesting scout candidate because he can forage more food than most. He obviously benefits in a few other ways, but he doesn't have skills in a lot of those field so like you know cool plus 10 percent mining but he's only got one mining skill um same with planting he gets plus 10 percent but he has a one and no passion in that either he's a kleptomaniac which means he fits in with the blood ravens but um that reminds me i should be checking his inventory periodically we had some weapons go missing but uh, it doesn't look like he has it um so not somebody that i'm like super in love with uh, resilience nice too for a marine if we're being honest but yeah not somebody i'm super in love with but definitely a, a solid marine candidate so yeah and we have uh snot face over here <laughs> um she is let's see pretty good at construction she also has a lot of passion for art but not quite the skill yet and she can contribute on the planting front and combat trigger happy so the shooting's not going to be super accurate but if we give her like a rapid fire weapon and just let her, you know, suppress the enemy while other people provide the accurate fire. She can definitely help out. She's ravenous. I'm not too worried about that. We have food for years at this point. Um, clumsy is interesting. I don't think that's super problematic, but I think we did see her hurt herself at one point because of that. So, yeah, another pawn that I'm not, like, super in love with, but could definitely find a use for. And then finally, Bastard is somebody thick-skinned, 
I do like for a Marine candidate. He's kind of on the fringe of what I would consider. 34 is definitely getting up there. In the lore, that's definitely too old. Um, we were a little bit more generous with our uh, requirements here, but uh, that's still getting there. Um, melee and mining seem to be his specialty. He can also do art, but he doesn't necessarily love it. So I think he was kind of a tech priest candidate more than he was a marine candidate just because you know he's not necessarily going to contribute any shooting whatsoever and is really more useful for his mining than anything else okay so both wildfire and snot face have been delivered to our little prison barracks here which means they should show up on here now so we'll have dual call them back up again i believe he has our best social skills so we're going to let him do the talking I might have somebody higher than 17, but that's fine. He's the captain. Okay. So, these two are quite valuable. Snot face less so, but that should still be enough. So, if we go for Arena, uh, Dice K, and... Who's the other one? Her. And I think we still end up netting some silver out of that. So we're doing a three for three. Losing, uh, what, one prisoner and two colonists and gaining three colonists. Of course, we can turn any of those colonists into prisoners and make them servitors if we so choose. But I don't see any reason to necessarily do that right now. Um, let's check in on our uh, away party here. So they're moving. Time to destination is a lot better. It looks like all of them are capable of walking now. So they are still pretty injured. One of them is down an arm. Um, I think Valorum. Or no, Elijah? Uh, one of them lost an arm. But they're all on their feet, and so we're moving a lot quicker. It's still uh, about four days, but it was, I think, almost nine previously. Actually, that does remind me. We check on in here. Uh, we have 1.8 days to go ahead and do this so we'll basically wait right up until the deadline and then pull the trigger on that I just need to make sure I don't forget uh, news of peace Kamboa and the Eldar have ceased hostilities I don't know how I feel about that we might need to go um, teach them a lesson all right so all the priorities are um, set up for our new additions obviously uh, this is fixed from the previous episode as well. Uh, luckily, whatever bug causes them to all turn into ones doesn't seem to carry over when I reload the game. Otherwise, I'd have to like manually fix it every time. But uh, yeah, fortunately, it, it seems to fix itself when I reload. Uh, so for Irina, we have her kind of with the default stuff up here. And then growing and plant cutting are really the only two jobs that we're going to ask her to do. Uh, she's not capable of, or not, I guess, willing. We don't have any hard incompatibilities with the mods that we're running here. So people can do anything. They're just not going to be happy about it. So we have other people to haul and clean. Not going to ask her to do it. She's just going to be mono-focused on plants. And, uh, you know, if we need to later on, we can add her to maybe maintaining um, some of our vats that we're using for different things. She's not particularly good at it, but she can get better. She has passion for it. And then moving down to Olesia. Right now, her main focus is going to be uh, crafting. She's not good at crafting, but she does have intellectual. So she can focus on things like drug synthesis where the intellectual skill is more important than the crafting skill but it's kind of in a weird place where i have to allow crafting for her to use that even though she's bad at crafting other things we should get her involved in planting and mining as well so i'm going to add that on here let's see mining will add as a three and Growing can also be a three. Yeah, we'll just make everything a three and she can kind of pick and choose what she feels like working on. Lastly, 
Uh, where's Daisuke? Up here. So he's basically just going to help with construction and then train his combat skills the rest of the time, essentially. He's also potentially going to go on guard duty. And then I, I really need to set up this recon and guarding, guarding one. We don't have a lot of that implemented right now, but that's something eventually I'd like to have where once the base is a little bit more built out, especially in this area, and we have more, um, more Marines to work with, uh, obviously they don't do a lot when we're just chilling at the base. So what I'd like to do is have squads set up on patrols, things like that, just so they're not all standing around doing nothing. Of course, they're not all doing nothing, but a lot of them are doing nothing. I tried to uh, occasionally ask them to go uh, clean the base. So the base is quite clean right now, but uh, I have to do that manually. It's not super time efficient. So I've asked um, Tarkus to come grab Emma, Emma's body anyway, uh, over here real quick. And just for, um, so he can get in it, but yeah, there's nothing in that. They can repair it, whatever, but yeah, this thing doesn't have anything in it, which somebody pointed out on a previous episode that I should check it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing there. So Tarkus is going to haul Emma's corpse. And I'm using the little rooms here that we've kind of discovered through the enemy mining all the way into our base from them. I'm using these as like sonar outposts to see where minerals are very deep in this mountain. So we had to run a um, wire all the way out here. It was kind of tedious, but we got it done. And so now we can see that there are more Cryptosleep caskets embedded in the mountain over there. So we'll want to investigate those eventually. It's interesting that um, I guess there isn't anybody else in that room. Otherwise, they probably would have tunneled into this one by now. There's some steel there. It looks like components here. More steel there. And more steel there. So um, very shortly, this one will be done. And it'll be time to move it. Uh, I don't know if there's value in placing it anywhere else in this space. Just because, uh, frankly, the area is not going to shift too much. But we will eventually move over to this one and get a nice read on this area, too. Uh, something just crash-landed. That's interesting. Uh, where did her body go? Right here. Okay, I'm going to forbid that for now. The reason I'm doing that is because if they just pick up the corpses um, and immediately butcher them, then I won't get things like hearts from them. I have to like very manually... Um, bring them over to this thing to make sure that we get hearts so whenever I need a batch I'll um, unforbid them and make sure they go where they need to go where did those Astartes underclothes land just on the floor okay Bubba go grab that and you're up to what part now four so I think Kono can go ahead and get four as well Bubba, let's um, change your appearance here. Okay, there we go. He can wear whatever he wants to wear on top of that, but we'll go ahead and equip those now because when we give them armor, like proper marine armor, we'll want to make sure they have it. Uh, Orion, you're not the designated surgeon. I don't know how this came to be. Yeah, you're set to three. Let's change that to a four. See if that helps. In the meantime, I'll draft you to change your priority and make sure that Gordian is now the one working on it. I want Gordian to get to... Uh-oh. That's going to be difficult. Yeah, this psychic drone is making things real difficult. Must be the work of chaos. Um, and of course, I can't click on him. Uh, do not fire, please. This is problematic. Um... I can't arrest him because there's some bug happening. 
So <laughs> what to do? Maybe we just vacate the premises. Thule, I'm going to have you get out of there as well. No, no. God damn it, no. Uh, that's my own fault. I should have made sure they held fire. Please stop shooting. Uh, you need to get the hell out of there. Duel, you might have to stalemate him. No, no, no. Stop shooting your bolters, please. Um, can I... Let's see. Smite, dull pain, flashbang. What can I do that's like non-lethal? Okay. You're not dead, right? Uh, where are you? Okay, just downed. Ah, uh, that was not fun. Did you really need to gouge out both of his eyes? <laughs> Duel, bro. And one of his toes. Okay, that was really unfortunate. Uh, we can probably make bionic eyes, but, um, all of this was unnecessary. You were never drafted, okay. Duel, since you maimed him, it's gonna be your job to rescue him. Or I guess Daisuke's gonna do it. Why doesn't that automatically override? No, no, no. What, what the hell are you doing right now? Orion, I'm going to ask you to do it. He's trying to, like, triage him on the floor in the kitchen. Just get him to the goddamn hospital. Oh, Duel took the bed. That's why. Um, Duel, did anything happen to you? Very minor electrical shock. So, let's see. I'm going to ask you to... Uh, no, Gordian. Gordian's already on it. Okay. Tissue printer, machining table. Which one do we need for eyes? What is a bionic eye going to cost us? Let's go regular speed for the time being. Um, one bionic eye plus three advanced components. Sad Wander. That psychic drone is devastating. Wow, he's already on his feet. <laughs> Granted, he's blind, but um, I'm so pissed about that. Like, one eye, fine, but both. You do me a favor and rest until healed. Also, bro, what the hell? You're using the wrong medicine. Okay, that's my own fault. Guy's got like bruises and you're wasting all our surgical medicine. What? No. Ugh. The psychic drone is really getting ridiculous. Um, try calming him. If not, we'll arrest him. You're not probably the best person for that job, but since uh, the two best people for the job just beat each other damn near to death, I guess we're going to rely on Tarkus. I feel like a similar situation played out in Dawn of War 2, so maybe this will work. Just, he's not the Ancient right now, so it's not quite the same. Also, his helmet's already off. Um, is this going to work? Looks like Orion was able to calm down Herakus at least, but is this one going to happen? Uh, apparently not. Okay, you got to drag him to the prison then. Okay, I forgot that doesn't work unless I manually do it. All right, I'm bringing you back. He didn't drop his weapon, did he? I'll have to see. I don't know if we need to, like, re-recruit him or what the deal is. Um, sometimes mental breaks will stop as soon as you basically take them into the prison and drop them. And then you can immediately release them. 
I'm not sure about this one in particular, so we'll um, we'll have a look see once we set him in there. That actually reminds me, I completely forgot to set Nate's priorities. Um, not that he's necessarily gonna do them, but uh, yeah, cooking we don't need. Construction not really interested in that from you. Hauling and cleaning need to be your top priorities. We'll see if he ever actually does that. Okay. Wow, Martellus, you were walking around with a lot of crap on you, weren't you? Um, so I think his mental break is over. Let's go ahead and release him. I don't think he'll immediately just leave the colony if I do that. Tarkus, go ahead and let him go. Okay. Um, go ahead and equip your bolter. And that as your sidearm. And he's going to go to bed. Okay. So that seemed to work out fine. But we almost had a marine just up and abandon us. Uh, to be fair, that's dereliction of duty and we would have had to execute him. But uh, fortunately, Tarkus was able to resolve it peacefully. He did leave a shit ton of resources in the prison, though. So Avidus decided to fly into a sadistic rage thanks to this psychic drone. Uh, fortunately, he's using the heavy bolter as a melee weapon rather than a um, shooty weapon because everybody in here would be dead. Uh, Duel is taking his sweet time trying to arrest him. There we go. Okay. So that appears to have fixed it. Um, they were already in the prison, so he just immediately became a prisoner. Uh, we'll go ahead and release him now that he's done with that. And there you go. Before you leave, go ahead and grab your weapon again. And okay, that ended a lot more peacefully than the last one. Um, there's nothing I can do about this psychic drone. There's like literally nothing. I could have everybody go stand next to this, which should help offset, but I think that's still a lot stronger. And uh, I can't just have my entire colony hanging out inside this radius. So Martellus is almost finished with the um, second light receptor. We need light receptors in order to make bionic eyes. So once he's finished with that, I have two bionic eyes queued up. Um, we're going to have to spend, I think, a total of 100 plasteel on this and about 12 components. Because the light receptor, I think, costs roughly the same as a bionic eye itself. So, effectively, the cost is double what you're seeing here. Um, where is that? There we go. So, 25 plasteel, 2 components. 25 plasteel, 3 components. So, 50 plasteel, 5 components for a bionic eye. And then if we decide to go with an advanced version then it's basically the bionic eye plus another three advanced components. I don't think that's necessary. We're just going to do two regular bionic eyes. And that should still get him back to where he was previously. Oh shit, we missed the scourge cluster. Uh, I didn't realize a whole day had passed. Or a whole two days. I thought we had like 1.8 days. Um. Well, that's my bad. I guess it... Uh, that really sucks. That's a lot of gold. Um, the goodwill I don't care about, but that is a lot of gold to turn down. Um. We'll try to get another quest going. In that case, I wish these were a little bit more obtainable. They're just too far away. I'd really like to help on this one, but um, I these don't do a great job of telling you where to go. So Golanand, Gol, Golanand, where the hell is that even? Oh, also we still have this to deal with. And that's not going anywhere. Um, this is not good. So this is the city under attack by the Tau um, for another day and a half. 
That's uh, quite the distance to go. And uh, we don't really have a way to get there or back. So I do have this guy. Um, it's not fueled up. We could fuel it up. I'm not sure if the 500 fuel is enough to get that far across the map. I also don't know how we would get back. So, I mean, even if we spend 500, I guess we could send them with another 500 fuel. That, of course, makes this thing a giant bomb if anybody shoots at it. Um, do we even have that much chem fuel? Three, uh, we got about 600, give or take. It's about 590 or something. So, we have enough for the, to fill the tank once, basically, and then another half-ish. But I, again, I don't know how far that gets us. And this thing, again, was scripted by me, so I don't know how well it works. <laughs> um, it's supposed to work like two-way. It's not like the other drop pods that fall apart upon impact. This should be able to fly us there and back. I just, again, don't know anything about the fuel or how well implemented it is. So we're probably just going to let that go. But once these guys have returned, we'll go ahead and attack this raid source. Um, and that'll give us something a little bit more um, action-oriented to do. Okay, both bionic eyes are complete. So, uh, do we want to operate here? Do we want to operate here? Um, I'm actually going to tell Bubba to get up. Bubba, get up. And you rest until healed here. No, no, no. You stay there. You take the bed. Okay. Now then, can we get... Oh, you're having a mental break. Perfect. Or are you? Yeah, he's having a mental break. Uh, Orion, I guess you're up. I don't know why you're drafted. Do me a favor. Uh, I guess I should probably create a surgery bill. Uh, let's see. Install bionic eye left and bionic eye right. And I need to make sure, because we do have an advanced bionic eye. I want to save that for something else. Got some hearts. There's a regular bionic eye there, so they're blue. Okay, got two of them. Orion, I'm going to ask you to do this surgery. Because uh, Gordian ain't doing it. And then Nicholas should be, um, other than some minor injuries, basically back to uh, full health. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. You got to use the good stuff, Orion. There we go. So both of... Um, Nicholas's eyes were installed successfully. So other than those, um, the only other injuries he had were some like relatively minor cuts to different parts of his body. Uh, and then he got shot by the pistol ball in his neuroglottis, which did quite a lot of damage, but uh, wasn't destroyed. So all in all, it looks like he'll be just fine. He can see again. Uh, we'll put him back on herbal medicine, and whenever he gets up, we'll have him re-equip his weapons. But uh, that whole mess is now mostly resolved. Gordian is operating on Bubba in this bed, which I don't love, but at least he's not on the floor. Um, and the surgery failed, wouldn't you know it? <laughs> I should have known better. I should have canceled that bill. Uh, so you probably just destroyed that implant. Yeah, it looks like it. Fortunately... Um, we should have another lying around in here because we made two of everything. We'll just need to make another for um, Kono. I don't know why that took so long to, me, ah, to remember. Uh, I think that was the Lairman's organ that was botched. Let's see. Yeah, it should be five. So if we go here, um, yeah, we need one more Lairman's. So let's add that now. It'd be really helpful if we had Gordian back 
Do we have Gordian back? We do. Um, he's tending to Bubba. I'm going to say... Let's make sure that that happens with the herbal medicine. And we will not add the other bill until Nicholas is up and about so that we can put Bubba in that bed. Because clearly, anytime we try to operate on people not in that bed, it fails immediately. Uh, the mathematics behind that seem a bit questionable because it's like a 100% fail rate. I think statistically, our chances of success, I think, are around 90 if it happens in that bed, maybe higher, and then it's virtually 100 in this one. But uh, the fail rate in this this one seems to be 100% regardless. So, yeah. Um, our growing area seems to be coming along nicely. Uh, let's finish the floors off in here. Doing them like very little bits at a time to avoid crashes. That's about the most I'm comfortable placing in terms of blueprints now. Um, we're going to mine out this main walkway. In fact, uh, I should have them mine this as well. That's where the entrance will be. And yeah, this is going to be a walkway that goes all the way through. And then we're going to do two more of these on this side. And it'll probably be... Oh, we should talk to these guys. Probably be whatever the hell, um, Neutroa Leaf. What is it called? Um, yeah, Neutroa Leaf. Okay. So we'll do Neutroa Leaf and then probably um, corn on the other one just so we have a sustainable food source that isn't corpses. Alien corpses. Um, yeah. So where are these visitors at? Every time that guy pops up I get very nervous let's see they do have quests but I don't feel like paying for a quest I don't think I have a lot of silver yeah only about 600 so 200 just for a quest seems like a stretch um, we could eat this guy luckily the sub-zero temperature actually it's quite warm outside but uh, most of the time it's below freezing out here and that keeps the bodies from rotting so when I forget to uh, get them hauled into the freezer they stay good for quite a while of course they'll still deteriorate from being exposed to the elements but um, yeah got like a refrigerator outside Our caravan is a little over a half day away, so I think what we'll do is we'll end the episode here. Um, I'm at about an hour and 20 minutes, so I'll have to edit that down to quite a bit less. Oh, thank God the psychic drone is ending. ending. I guess I should say thank the Emperor. Um, the voices of chaos are no longer eating away at our minds. Um, hopefully we don't have anybody cut anybody else's eyes out anytime soon. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and call it here. And in the next episode, we'll pick back up with these guys having returned and we'll send a party to deal with that Eldar outpost. Um, and then hopefully pick up another quest. It's been kind of quiet at the base. We haven't been raided in a while. Um, I say that with, you know, piles of towel bodies still out here and their weapons strewn across the battlefield but um yeah it's been a little bit so i need to figure out oh god they're still fighting why are they still fighting i i will never understand why they decide to pick fights with um space marines Ooh, that's not good you almost killed him <laughs> wow um, Martellus moved his teeth professionally, nipping Herakus in the brain. Uh, we are apparently a greater danger to ourselves than any other faction. Um, the Tau couldn't even hurt a single one of us significantly. 
Um, the Eldar did a decent job. They did take an arm off one of our scouts, but again, it's a scout, not a full marine. And then um, we have two social fights because of, I guess this one wasn't because of the drone. The drone had ended, but maybe they were still um, not super pleased. I mean, like, look, look at the freaking mood threshold on that. And yet, still we're having these fights where people are getting damn near killed. Because every single person in this colony is a killing machine. Um, so yeah, we need to hustle on this. Um, I think we'll have plenty of time to get him into the base and operate properly. But maybe I should have had Gordian go out there and just stabilize him in the field. But it's actually going to be closer than I would have liked. Um, where are you? We'll keep a close eye on this. Oh, I can't select him because he's being carried. It's okay. Don't think it'll take eight hours to bring him inside. Of course, I'll say that, and then it'll take seven, and we won't have time to actually operate. Gordian, do me a favor. Um, pick up some medicine. Get, like, five... Okay, get over here. We'll drop it on the floor so that he'll immediately pick it up because he won't actually use it from his own inventory. Uh, thank you for that, Endymion. You are free to go. Drop that on the ground. And then we'll undraft you. And let's see. Make sure that he's on the right medical thing. Okay, perfect. Six hours, so it wasn't too bad. And yeah, please... Let's actually do stabilize, because he should prioritize the... Oh, maybe not. Let's do tending. Okay. I thought for some reason they stabilized with medicine, but maybe not. Okay. So one of the bites taken care of. Let's get the other bite. Awesome. He's going to be in a coma for a while, though. It's fantastic. <laughs> All right, with that, let's go ahead and call it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some RimWorld with you. Next time around, we'll uh, kill some Eldar. And uh, maybe some other Xenos. Just hopefully not each other. Um, so thanks again, and uh, I'll see you next time.